Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Tom Murphy Show. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to be talking with representatives of the Working Families Party. In the past few years, there's been a proliferation, proliferation of uh, minor parties in the state of New York. Uh, just in the past year, we've had the Reform Party, uh, which, uh, as far as I know, has not offered any reforms. We've had the Women's Equality Party, whose platform I agree with, but it was started by a man for his own political benefit. But one of the, one of the most active and most uh, you know, hardworking parties in New York State is the Working Families Party. And tonight we're very pleased to have as our guests Pat Welsh, who is the chair of the West, Westchester Putnam chapter of the Working Families Party, and Phil Lieber, who's the Hudson Regional Political Director. Thank you guys for showing up tonight. Thank you. My um, pleasure. Thanks for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Let, let, let me just get right to it. Let, Pat, give me a little history about the Working Families Party, why it was started, where it was started, and you know what, what, what was the genesis behind it? Well, the, the, the real genesis behind it was the fact that uh, working people, we felt that working people in the state, uh, either with Republican or Democratic uh, candidates, a lot of times weren't getting their fair share. We would go up to Albany and fight for minimum wage is a perfect example. We'll go to Albany and the Democratic side of the assembly would uh, vote yes for it all the way and the Republican controlled Senate would always vote it down. Uh, so we could never, and the governor was always in between depending on what the governor was. So we were never ever really to get any, any, anywhere with that. So um, when uh, George Pataki ran against uh, Mario Cuomo uh, and uh, Cuomo's last term, uh, Pataki uh, actually did not beat him Republican to Democrat. He, if, if there were just the two parties, uh, Cuomo would have won because he got more votes on the Democratic line than Pataki, Pataki got did on, a Republican on the Republican line. line. However, we saw that the conservative party line, which is on, uh, the largest minor party in New York State, gave him 300,000 votes, which put Pataki over the top. So that's when we said to ourselves, you know, maybe there's something there, you know. Because then George Pataki went ahead and did all these uh, conservative issues and, and going and definitely against the minimum wage and going on many, many ways of making the state more conservative. Outsourcing. He did a lot of yes. outsourcing, and too. And he destroyed the Public Service Commission and he did many other things that affected a lot of, a lot of people in the state. So uh, we saw that as, as a chance for us to do the same thing. Working people could, you know, uh, have, a, have their own uh, third party. Uh, right. I know the Liberal Party was uh, originally the Labor Party. Uh, many years ago, and the Liberal Party was taken over by, by Crooks uh, yeah. and Giuliani, and they destroyed, pretty much destroyed the Liberal Party. So we saw this as an opportunity to do that. So we went in there and we collected enough signatures to get on the ballot, um, and uh, we ran uh, Peter Vallone, if you remember him. He sure. was speaker from uh, Queens. City Council uh, yeah. in New York City, yeah. Yeah, from Queens, and put him on the line. And we got uh, 49,000. 48,750 votes, you need 50,000 on a gubernatorial race. And, but when we, we went around... Just, you need 50,000 in a gubernatorial race to get a spot right. on the ballot permanently? Yes. Okay. So we went around and, and uh, took us two weeks, and uh, the, the Board of Elections went around the whole state, and we finally found out that we had actually made it over 50,000. Okay. Because what happened in a lot of the smaller areas, they just combined the... Um, our votes in with the Democratic votes. Right. Because right. Peter Vallone was running on a Democratic line also. Uh -huh. So we eventually separated all that and we found out that we actually made it the first time out. So then we became a, an official party uh, on the ballot in New York State. Excellent. And, uh, so, so we used that and, and we used that as an opportunity and our big, six, our big success early on was actually raising the minimum wage. We were able to convince the Republican uh, Senate to override the veto of their own governor. Okay. which was, we thought to ourselves, this is just what we wanted to do. This is great. Yeah. You know, we started this party and we were able to convince them through having the party that we were able to uh, uh, get the minimum wage passed, uh, an override of their own governor, which was... Uh, yeah, it's a, quite a feat. It was. Especially in Albany. It was. And sad yeah. to say, I mean, I don't, there haven't been any changes since then. <laughs> you know, back in, I believe it was back in 2002 that we actually got that raise. Right, right. So, I mean, it's, it's a long overdue for another raise. It is. It is. Long yeah, I, I saw something the other day that if minimum wage had kept pace uh, with inflation, we'd be over $10 an hour easily now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and when you think about it, $10 an hour in, in, in New York and in the, the area around New York is just, you know, it's just ridiculously low. Uh, Phil, why don't you talk a little bit about the goals of the organization? Well, um, <clears throat> they're, they're obviously varied, but uh, I'll talk 
about them in terms of some issues. Okay. Uh, obviously, minimum wage is really important to us. In fact, we are heartened uh, by Cuomo's recent efforts to uh, push for the minimum wage. Uh, we'll see how far right. it goes, but that is something that we're actively pushing him on to keep going, and we want to see a uh, minimum wage of at least $15 an hour statewide. Um, this is something that is really on the top of our priority list, but there are other things as well, like uh, paid family leave, paid sick leave. These are two very important things. I mean, we you don't hear them talked about very often. Well, I guess now it has broken into the national stage, which I, I'm very happy mm -hmm. to see. Uh, you heard it on one of the presidential debates um, mentioned. You know, these are kind of basic worker protections you see in pretty much, I, I could be wrong here, but pretty much every advanced industrialized nation in the world. Mm -hmm. um, they're humane. I, when somebody gets sick, they should be able to take some time off and be able to take care of their children, even if it's their children that get sick. So mm -hmm. uh, it's these kind of basic worker rights that we're really focused on right now, obviously. Uh, but beyond that, we do have electoral goals, uh, goals as well. We have something called our Pipeline Project. It's a concerted effort to uh, recruit and elect progressive elected officials throughout the state. Uh, now, we do this for a variety of reasons. I mean, it's always nice to have somebody that we've worked with that, you know, we know is progressive. That's not just a progressive, but a progressive champion, somebody that will actually fight for the things we care about. Uh, you know, so it's uh, good, number one, because we want to see uh, folks uh, well-situated run for higher office if the opportunity ever arises. But we're also doing it in conjunction with something that we are uh, working with our partners in launching, something we call the Progressive Electeds Network, a uh, network of progressive elected officials. Now, this is something that, you know, is just in its very basic formation stages, so nothing too exciting to talk about yet. Uh, but eventually, we want to marshal the energy of all these progressives, that we have, some that we have helped elect, others that are already in mm -hmm. place, to push statewide policies, statewide issues uh, to the fore through their collective action, uh, whether that means passing resolutions in each little municipality or city or just sign on letters or just talking in a unified voice. Um, so our effort to, you know, we looked at the, the scene, the political scene and said, look, going like, going to Albany, just lobbying for what we want isn't enough. The ballot line helped us. It gave us some leverage with politicians. You know, they want our line, you know, they want to then focus on our interests, but better yet, we elect our own candidates, uh, you know, folks that see running for office as an extension of their activism, uh, get a, kind of a new breed of a politician mm -hmm. into office. Now, it's not to say that all the existing office holders are all bad. There are some great progressive uh, champions out there, elected officials, but this was a way in a concerted, very clear way to elect a whole other group of folks who will press for the issues we care about, whether they're campaign finance right. reform, another big goal of ours, um, women's equality, uh, racial justice, criminal justice, uh, and these also can be wrapped right into goals. Yeah. So I'll just stop there because when we get into goals, I can talk forever. You know, just from my experience in the past few years, uh, I'm a member of Local One International Union of Elevator Constructors, and we've been advocating for many years for a elevator safety bill, which would license elevator mechanics. Believe it or not, uh, you need a license to cut hair in New York, but you don't need a license to fix an elevator. Uh, anybody can say they're an elevator mechanic and go in and try and fix an elevator. Uh, we've, been, we've been lobbying for that. We've been fighting hard for that. It, it, would, it would protect us uh, as workers. It would protect the public. And, you know, we, we came real close this year. You know, the, the Assembly always passes it, the Senate. The majority of the Senate was signed on to it. The majority of the majority was signed on to it, but it never went anywhere. And at the end of the day, when, when you know, we really figured out why it wouldn't go anywhere, it was because the real estate board just said no. And they're the ones that are you know, paying the bills up there for these politicians. And it's just so disheartening, because it's just it's common sense. And you know, common sense doesn't prevail when it, when it goes up against dollars and cents. And, and that really is what we have to change in Albany. And I know you guys have been working hard at that, but it's just, it's, for, for a, a working person who goes to Albany with something that, you know, we, will protect his fellow workers and the public, and for it not to pass, because... Uh, I, I believe that uh, campaign finance reform is, is what is definitely necessary. I mean, if we were to pass a decent, good campaign finance reform in this state, it would change the world of politics exactly. completely, completely. It would make everything so different. That level the playing field. It would definitely level the playing field. And you have uh, a number of gentlemen that are on trial right now, uh, that were in top leadership positions, and right. that would have never have happened, uh, never as, have happened. As if we was... speak here tonight on November 30th, 
Uh, Sheldon Silva was convicted today of all was counts. That's right. Yeah. Of all seven counts against him. Wow. So the the the, the assembly speaker of uh, 20 years is going to prison. Yeah. This and shows how widespread the problem is. Yes. And another reason we came into being was we we felt that. No, the Republicans definitely did not, uh, aren't concerned uh, with the interests of working people. The Democrats, you know, while there are a lot, to go a lot of good things I could say about the Democrats. Yes. In fact, you know, I I'm going to be straight up honest with you here. We, we overwhelmingly endorse Democrats. Uh, we have more ideological alignment with them than we do with Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, however, what we noticed with the uh, Democratic Party is a rightward shift, uh, in particular mm -hmm. uh, in regards to economic issues. And, you know, the main reasons for that is, you know, any kind of economic reform that is in the interest of working people is more often than not, not in the interests of the wealthiest of us. Yes. And so, you know, uh, unfortunately, poor people cannot afford to contribute yes. to elections. And this is why we have a system that kind of perpetuates the enrichment uh, of a few and beggars the rest of us. And so we figured we need our own party so that, you know, at the very least, we can voice our concerns. And that's why we, even when people vote for a Democrat mm -hmm. and they vote for a Democrat on our line, they're, they're saying something. They're, they're sending a message. They're sending a yes. message to them. And okay. just, you know, I, I think most people watching know, I, you know I, I'm a lifelong Democrat, uh, but, but I, you know, I've been disappointed in my party uh, because I think over the past 30, 40 years, we've tried to, you know, this triangulation theory, you know, like if we become more Republican, then it'll be easier to get elected, but you end up not standing for anything. You know, the, the, you end up not having anything that you really want to fight for and that you really care about. And as we brought up before, you know, Democrats are just as guilty of being perverted by big money as Republicans are. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's the sad thing is that it costs a lot of money to get elected, and you know, who has a lot of money? Well, you know, the Democrats fall into the trap of, of chasing the mob rather than leading yes, the mob. Yes, exactly. You know, it, it's like if they see the public opinion going a certain direction, they chase after it rather than go up and say, wait a minute, where are you going? Come back over here because this is where you should be. You know, and what happens is, is, is money can change the mob's mind. Either way, oh, without a doubt, you know. So, I mean, so when they, when you have a lot of money, especially from the real estate industry, right. you know, you can start putting commercials on television, and it moves people b back and forth. And you know, in, in in the past thirty years, you know, it, we've been running away from the uh, term liberal. Mm. You know, as if the, to be liberal is to be weak. To be mm. liberal is to be you know, un-American. And and we've let the other side control the argument, and it's it's just not true. You know, right. I mean, you know. Franklin Delano Roosevelt and people like that, you know, created programs that have, you know, uh, allowed the prosperity of, of America to, to take off. Right. You know, we're still living on a legacy of the 30s and 40s. And it, it's getting chipped away at and chipped away at. And we say, well, we'll compromise a little. You know, when my opponent has an insane idea, right, like getting rid of Social Security. Right. If I meet him halfway, it's a half insane idea. Exactly. You know, I mean? so, yeah, it, right. it, but That's we right. have to voice that. You know, we, we, we've been too afraid of you know, being seen as contentious. And, but the other side doesn't care about being seen as contentious. No. I, 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 I'm well, just, their, their base is contentious. It, it's all about contention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they like to see that. They, they like to see that. Well, that's, let, let's talk a little bit about, and I have just for, you know, to, uh, you know, full disclosure, I have been endorsed by the Working Families Party a few times, and I very much appreciate that. But let's talk about the process, because it is a real process. It isn't a backroom, uh, you know, under the table deal like some parties. So let's, you guys can speak to the, how a person who desires of being on your line can go about getting it. Well, they, well I'll just start. We, they start a fight. They can go on our web, uh, statewide web page mm -hmm. and uh, put an application in. And that application is processed by, by uh, well, Phil's actually an organizer, uh, besides his fancy title, he's, he's an organizer. <laughs> that's right. Um, I'm essentially an organizer, <laughs> that's right. And Phil will um, present all of those, and we do, they fill out a